Jackson gritted his teeth as the draconid guards roughly shoved him and the other human prisoners into the cramped holding cell. His muscles ached from the harsh treatment, and he could feel the bruises forming on his skin. But he refused to show any sign of weakness in front of these alien captors. As the cell door slammed shut, Jackson quickly scanned the room, taking stock of the other men. There were about twenty of them, all looking battered and dejected. Jackson recognized a few faces, his comrades from the ill-fated mission that had led them to this fate. Locking eyes with his friend, Caden Jackson gave a subtle nod. Caden returned the gesture, his expression grim but determined. Jackson knew they would need to work together to keep morale up and plan their escape. The Draconids, a reptilian species with scaly green skin and sharp talons, had ambushed their scouting party a week ago. Outnumbered and outmatched, the humans had fought valiantly but were ultimately overwhelmed and taken prisoner. Now they found themselves in the heart of the Draconid Empire, facing an uncertain future. As the guards departed, leaving them alone, Jackson took a deep breath and stepped forward. All right, men. I know this looks bleak, but we can't lose hope. We're going to get through this together. A murmur of agreement rippled through the Greek. Caden moved to stand beside Jackson, his steady presence a comfort to the others. First things first, Jackson continued, we need to take stock of our situation and plan our next move. Does anyone have any ideas or insights to share? For the next few hours, the men discussed their options, sharing what they knew about the Draconid civilization and their captors. While Ferris, a former intelligence officer, provided valuable information about the political and military structure of the Empire. Luca, a skilled engineer, suggested ways they might be able to sabotage their guards or the facilities. As they talked, Jackson noticed that the men were gradually regaining their sense of purpose and determination. The initial despair was giving way to a steely resolve. These were seasoned soldiers, after all, and they were not about to give up without a fight. Their planning was interrupted when the cell door slid open and a draconic guard stepped in, accompanied by a tall, imposing figure. Jackson straightened his posture, ready to face whatever challenge lay ahead. The newcomer was a draconid with striking features, his scales a deep blue and his eyes a piercing yellow. Jackson recognized him as Caius, a high-ranking military officer he had encountered during a previous mission. Caius regarded the humans with a cool, calculating gaze. Greetings, prisoners. I am Caius, Caius commander of this facility. I've come to inform you that your fate has been decided. You will be sent to the mining colonies, where you will serve as laborers for the glory of the Troy. A murmur of dismay rippled through the group, but Jackson stepped forward, his chin held high. We are not your slaves, Caius. We are soldiers, and we will not submit to your will without a fight. Caius's lips curled into a faint smile. Brave words, human, but you would be wise to accept your fate. Resistance is futile. Jackson held the drake in his gaze, refusing to back down. We'll see about that. Caius chuckled and turned to leave, but paused at the door. Oh, and one more thing. Any further attempts at escape or rebellion will be met with severe consequences. I suggest you keep that in mind. As the door slammed shut, Jackson felt a surge of anger and determination. He would not let his men be broken, not without a fight. They would find a way to escape and return home, no matter the cost. In the days that followed, the human prisoners were put to work in the harsh conditions of the mining colonies. The labor was backbreaking and the draconid guards were merciless, but Jackson and his men refused to give in to despair. They worked together, supporting one another and finding small ways to resist their captors. Luca used his engineering skills to sabotage the mining equipment, causing delays and disruptions. Ferris gathered intelligence, learning the layout of the facilities and the schedules of the guards. Slowly they began to win the respect of their draconid overseers. Caius, in particular, seemed intrigued by the human prisoners' resilience and loyalty to one another. One day Caius summoned Jackson to his chambers. The draconid commander regarded him with a thoughtful expression. Your men have impressed me human. Their skills and determination are valuable assets to the Empire. I have a proposition for you. Jackson tensed, bracing himself for the worst. What kind of proposition? I am in need of skilled soldiers to bolster my forces. If you and your men are willing to swear allegiance to the Draconid Empire, I will grant you your freedom and allow you to serve under my command. Jackson's eyes widened in surprise. He had not expected this, and if we refuse? Kaisa's expression hardened. Then you and your men will remain in the mining colonies, condemned to a life of backbreaking labor. Jackson knew he had to tread carefully. The offer was tempting, but he couldn't trust the Draconic commander. Still, he couldn't ignore the plight of his men, who were suffering under harsh conditions. I will need to discuss this with my men, Jackson said, and we will give you our answer in the morning. Case nodded. Very well. I expect your decision by then. As Jackson returned to the holding cell, he found his men waiting anxiously for his report. 
he quickly relayed Caius's proposition, and the room erupted in heated discussion. As some of the men were outraged at the idea of swearing allegiance to the Draconid Empire, while others saw it as their only chance for freedom and a better life. Jackson listened intently, weighing the pros and cons. In the end, it was Caden who spoke up, his voice calm and resolute. We've come this far together, and we've proven our strength and resilience. I say we take this chance and turn it to our advantage. We can use our position to gather intelligence, sabotage the Shikta, the Rakhinek military, and maybe even find a way to escape. Jackson nodded, his mind made up. Caden's right. We'll accept Tyus's offer, but we'll do it on our own terms. We'll play the game, but we'll never forget who we are and where we come from. The other men murmured in agreement, and Jackson felt a surge of pride in his comrades. They were a formidable group united by a common purpose and a refusal to be broken. The next morning Jackson and his men stood before Caius, their faces set in determined expressions. We've made our decision, Caius, Jackson said. We will swear allegiance to the Draconian Empire, but on one condition we want to serve under your direct command, as your elite soldiers. Caius raised a scaly eyebrow, clearly intrigued. Interesting. And what makes you think you have the skills to serve in such a capacity? Jackson stepped forward, his gaze unwavering. We are trained in combat, strategy, and covert operations. We've proven our resilience and loyalty, even as your prisoners. Give us a chance, and we'll show you what we're capable of. Kais considered the proposal, his yellow eyes narrowing thoughtfully. Finally, he nodded. Very well, human. You and your men will serve under serve under my command. Let us see what you are made of. And so the human prisoners became the Draconid Empire's elite soldiers known as the Vanguard. Jackson and his men quickly proved their worth, excelling in combat and intelligence gathering. They became legends among the Draconid forces, respected and feared in equal measure. As they rose through the ranks, Jackson and his men used their position to gather valuable information about the Draconid Empire's weaknesses and vulnerabilities. They carefully planned and executed daring sabotage operations, crippling key military installations and supply lines. Case, initially skeptical of the humans, came to see them as trusted allies. He marveled at their resilience, their loyalty, and their unwavering determination. Slowly, he began to see the Draconid Empire's treatment of human prisoners as a waste of valuable resources. One day, Kais summoned Jackson and Caden to his chambers. I have a proposition for you, my friends, he said, his voice uncharacteristically warm. I believe it is time for the Draconid Empire to reconsider its stance towards your people. I am prepared to negotiate a peace treaty and establish an alliance between our worlds. Jackson and Caden exchanged a surprised glance, scarcely daring to believe what they were hearing. An alliance, Jackson said, his voice barely above a whisper. After all we've been through... Caius nodded solemnly. Yes, my friend, it is time for a new era of cooperation and mutual understanding. The Draconid Empire has much to learn from your people, and I believe we can both benefit greatly from an alliance. Jackson felt a surge of hope and pride. All their sacrifices, all their struggles, had not been vain. They had not only survived, but they had forged an unlikely friendship with their former captors, transforming even the most hardened Draconid into allies. As Jackson and Caden shook hands with Caius, sealing the historic agreement that they knew that their journey had only just begun, the road ahead would be long and arduous, but they were ready, united by their shared experiences and their unwavering determination to build a better future for their peoples.